Jo Habari Zaleo. My name is Jokudu Guya. My name is Jahan Biku. My name is Rashik Fatah. I'm the director of Our Future Cities. On behalf of ICLI Africa, the African Centre for Cities, Our Future Cities and Partners, I'm excited to welcome all of you to the Rise Africa 2021 Action Festival. Rise Africa has been growing as a platform of thinkers, doers and enablers, committed to inspiring action for sustainable cities. RISE Africa is about building active networks across academia, government, private sector, civil society and the arts. Our entry point is based not on articulating problems, followed by proposing solutions, but rather on celebrating our cities as places of innovation and culture, while asking what more we can do to make them more sustainable, inclusive and vibrant. This festival is hosting 46 sessions from across 16 countries in Africa and the world. Every session aims to share new ideas, showcase ongoing actions and launch new initiatives by bringing participants together to chart a new route forward. We hope that the festival program will inspire you to commit to one or more specific actions that you or your organization will take on. As the session closes, you'll be redirected to a survey in which you can articulate these actions. We will follow up on these committed actions throughout the year and offer resources, connections, and support. In this way, we are testing the idea that events can galvanize action, and we hope that you will join us in this effort. Beyond the session, there are many ways to take part in the festival. Register for further sessions. Vote for your favorites in the photo competition. Watch a variety of inspiring video provocations. Test your knowledge of African cities from our daily quiz. And listen and dance to the Rise Africa 2021 playlist. We hope that you will make all attempts to reach out to new people and build lasting connections. Before we begin, it is important to note that this session is being recorded and that by participating, you are consenting to be recorded. All recordings will be available on the program page after the festival. Creative expression is vital for creating new futures for our citizens. So we invite you to enter the session in the spirit of creativity and dreaming. Look at how far you have come. Look at how far you are going from the rubbles of the city to royalty. Yes, you are the stuff that legends are made from. We come from a bantu of the crackling fire. A bantu that come alive around the burning. A bantu that set the air alight with blazing voices. A bantu that chanted for freedom from the front lines. Spreading struggle songs from yesteryears like a wildfire. Igniting all the way up to touch the skies. Haram, babe! I come from the urban legends who placed their lives on those lines. I want to be heard. I want our stories to be told. I want our songs to be sung by the children. Go on then, tell the children that they are the stuff that legends are made from. You are, yes, you are the stuff that legends are made from. Hello everybody, um, welcome. I will, uh, my name is Franka Vermalek and I will host today's session. It's going to be an interactive workshop session that um, I hope you will enjoy. Um, if everybody that is able to can open their camera so that we can see each other's faces and we know who's joining us um, and who is not, uh, that will be nice. Can everybody hear me correctly? Then I'll share my screen and start start the presentation. And then we can go into the discussion. All right, I hope you can see my screen. Welcome. <laughs> As I said, my name is Franca van Marwijk. 
And this is Nambo Playgrounds, approaching participatory design in Zanzibar uh, through role play. Um, so I'm joined here with Alexandra and Irini, and Alexandra and I are associates of African Architecture Matters, and we are a nonprofit consultancy working with African built environment on heritage, planning, research, and education. Um, mainly concerned with this question on how to manage and develop this dynamically changing environment, but do that with respect to the community, culture, and history. And we try to collaborate and work with local people and organizations uh, to do so. Um, and then we're also joined here with Irini, and she's working with Eric Architecture, which is an architectural office inspired by contemporary culture and craftsmanship and very experienced with community participatory design projects and in particular the playgrounds um, and they work both in the Netherlands and in Greece. So I'm assuming from the faces that I see here that most of you know where Zanzibar is, what it is not, so I will not go into that in too much detail, but it's this archipelago, archipelago on the coast of Tanzania with two main islands um, and a number of small islands um, and it's this famous tourist destination because of its beaches, because of this um, World Heritage Site and Stone Town um, and because of its uh, local culture. So where is Nambo? <clears throat> Nambo is part of Zanzibar Town um, and is predominantly consisting of residential areas and was formerly divided from Stone Town by this tidal creek. And um, Nambo is actually um, earmarked, earmarked as important area for development in the upcoming plans of Zanzibar, mainly because the city is just growing so much um, and the government is realizing that this is an area that should be developed further. And we as a matters have been involved in uh, the heritage urban landscape research on Zanzibar and Nambo in 2015. We're just looking at kind of the architecture and the heritage and the tangible and non-tangible elements of, of Nambo area and see where and what places can be developed and what is of particular interest. And we did that together with the local department. Um, and through this research without, with finding all of these beautiful buildings that are hidden in Nambo. Um, it was also found that the number of playgrounds have been decreased immensely since the revolution and there were already few playgrounds left. Um, and this map that you see here showcases um, the playgrounds that used to be there and the ones that are here now. Um, they are commonly referred to as Mapandea, um, meaning like places for swings, um, and they were used for children to play, and now there are only um, two playgrounds left. So, with finding or realizing this, um, we also know that a lot of existing playgrounds, not only in Zanzibar, but everywhere in the world, are developed with these similar features. So, there's enclosed space, restricted hours of operation, there's this imported plastic structures. Um, they require an entrance fee that cannot be paid by everybody. Um, and they also mainly target children under the age of six and only offer these basic game structures. Um, and if you look at Nambo, where about one fourth of its inhabitants are registered as under 18, it's kind of a missed opportunity um, in developing their competences regard to motor skills, imagination, creativity, critical thinking, entertainment, and just offering them a safe place to, to play. Um, so that's kind of where the start of, of developing this project came from, uh, from the assumption that we wanted to increase the number of playgrounds in Nambo, but with designing playgrounds, um, there's kind of this responsibility coming with it because all of these places have something special about them, like a hidden meaning, sense of place, 
depth mystery. And if you look at Nambo and in Zanzibar, you see a lot of children that use just the elements in their surrounding and in their spaces um, to play. And there's a lot of creativity in the items that they use and the ways that they use them. And um, like a proper playground would bring all of this imagination together. Um, so we also realize as AM Matters, we are not an organization that design, that are going to design these playgrounds. It should come from the community. Um, and in the process of developing uh, this project, um, we kind of want to bring in input for the outline and the model of uh, this participatory project. Um, and it will bring to attention issues and challenges that we might encounter later. And we will do this in like a fun game form element, um, which I hope there will be enough participants to, to be able to do this. Um, so what we will do today is we will look at Mabam <clears throat> Peyani. Excuse me for my pronunciation. Um, it's, a, it's an area in Zanzibar. I will, not, I will not go into detail in the area because you will you don't live there, so you will not have any idea of how it works, and neither do we. Um, so we will reenact a community meeting. Um, so from the assumption that we will have the stakeholders, the people of the neighborhood, um, our partners all together, uh, we are inviting you within this community meeting uh, by using role play and introducing everybody with different characters. And the outline will be that um, there will be an introduction of characters, a discussion on certain themes around the playground, which won't go into detail of where exactly certain items should be or not, but more um, on the type of material, the way of constructing certain items. And um, with each of you having these types of characters, you can put yourself in the shoes of somebody else and try to think about these community meetings and these um, these discussions from a different point of view. Um, so we have created about 20 different characters. Um, these characters are either people that we have experienced in the past um, or that we assume will be in this meeting. Um, and each of these characters have specific items so that you understand a little bit how this person could be within the discussion. So if you look at this image, you see um, this old man who has, who doesn't really like the noise of kids while playing at the playground, um, but on the other hand, his knowledge and his experience uh, on the site and the location of the people is important to the rest of the community. And then there are certain words or sentences with each character that you are not allowed to say and things that are, are relative to these not allowed to say sentences are of course also not um, not allowed um, so within these discussions um, it's really important that you imagine yourself being this in this case this old man and being a little bit grumpy in this meeting and um, yeah kind of leading from that point of view um, so what we'll do now is we have shared a PDF with, um, I will stop sharing my screen. There is a PDF in the chat with all of the characters. Um, but in order for us to know who- I'm sending it again. There is a link that you can download the PDF. Um, Just let us know if anybody has any problem of accessing this because it's important for everybody to have it. Alexandra, the, yes. the link shared um, takes us to a Word document. So I'm going to share the one that I have with the PDF. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Right. Yes, I, I used the wrong one. I'm very sorry. 
Um, everybody that is able to join in this discussion, um, can you please turn on your camera so that we can divide everybody with a number and a certain character? Um, in that way, we know that you are able to join a discussion and are not just listening in while you're doing other type of work. That would be great. I see now four people, five. Okay. We have a question that uh, someone is not committed to participate. Of course, you're not uh, um, obliged to participate if you cannot or if, or if you don't want to, but it's good to know who will participate so we can start uh, assigning characters. So maybe the people that want to participate can open their videos and say hi or something. <laughs> All right, then we will send everybody a direct message with the number um, on the card. And uh, it will be very helpful if when you receive the card with the character to place the character name instead of your name temporary so we know which character you have. And since we are all here in this room, maybe me and Irini, we are also taking a character. <laughs> Maybe we take our characters, like the real characters, because this is actually yeah. the aim of this exercise, to train us. So how many we have participants? I think you can share, you can start giving people a number and then we can- Yeah, I can do this. So, um, there you Um, okay, this is random. And if you're not able to turn on your camera, but you are able to speak and you would still like to participate, you can also let us know by writing a message. Um, and then you can still join. Mm. So who is, uh, okay, Irini, I'm also sending you one. Oh no, you're doing yourself, sorry. Um, so I've sent to a few people. If you, if you want to receive a character, please send a hi or something on the chat so I can already send you a number for the ones that haven't done it so far. Okay. I think we can uh, start. I will share my screen again. Let me see how it works. <laughs> I can see a government official already. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Um, uh, am I forgetting someone? 
One, two, three, four. It's only four people. <laughs> I mean, you can send still other people also a number, and then at the point where they feel like they they want to join, they can do that. Okay. Perhaps we can start with introducing ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> So let me start with the government official. Uh, who are you? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sale. I'm 50 years old and I work for the government here in Zanzibar. Looking forward to the discussions. Thanks. And then uh, Yusuf. Hi, um, hello, I'm Yusuf. Uh, I'm uh, 45 years old. I'm a father. Uh, I have children who are six and 12. Um, and I, I want to help out, but uh, I'm really too busy. Attention matters. All right. Um, then I see Ella. Hi everyone, my name is Ella. I'm an international volunteer. I am 20 year, I'm a 20 year old young woman and I'm enthusiast, enthusiastic and I have fresh innovative ideas. I want to participate and help the community. I'm good at organizing workshops and events, but I just don't understand the culture and religion of the people in Zanzibar. <laughs> nice. And then I see Hushman Fadlala. I don't know what your character is. Do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yes. Okay. Sham Fadlala speaking from Cairo, Egypt. I'm uh, 29 years old. I'm an urban planner and uh, at uh, informal uh, development and, and formal settlement development fund in Cairo. Uh, I would like to participate uh, to get uh, a new experience in this uh, uh, Press Africa conference. Um, welcome. Um, I think, uh, if I'm correct, you've been assigned a number and a character. And it would be great if you can also introduce your character. And then from here on, you... Um, kind of speak in this discussion from the point of view of your character. Again, please, again. My connection is uh, weak here, so I can't hear. Uh, we, we have shared with you a PDF that has a number of characters on there. Um, it is in the chat. Um, <coughs> yes. If it helps, you can also turn off your camera if it works for your connection. That is okay. Um, Isam, I have sent you uh, the link in your private chat and the number five. You can open the PDF and go to the number five and see who is your character. And in the meantime, I will continue with Fadila. Hi. Can you hear Can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, my name is Adela. I am a six-year-old girl, and I can play with most toys, um, and like easy toys and things. Um, I go to school every day, but I would like to spend as much of my time playing as possible. And um, I cannot go to the park if um, it's not like certain hours. <laughs> Right. And then Irini. Oh, yes. I do not have a character, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm we are ourselves. I'm Irini, and I'm just going to listen. Very good. Uh, of uh, your answers. And so we'll try to, to uh, yeah, I'll try to gather them so you can help us to to uh, 
to organize one playground based on the needs of the society and uh, the participants. So actually our work as a host of such a participatory, it's more about listening and understanding and uh, trying to be not uh, judgmental and just to, yeah, to learn from the needs of the people because they, the community is not much better than us. And uh, yeah, this is my role, actually. A team member? Let's see. Uh, Ali or Joanita Aguti, if I pronounce it correctly. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. So my name is Ali. I'm 10 years old. I, my special power is that I'm good at 25 difficult discussions. And um, I only want so careful is challenging, and I like anything that's challenging to me. I like to be And that's it. A little bit mm -hmm. difficult to hear you, but I think, I think we got the gist of it. Okay. And then I'm just going. Can I repeat it? Um, yes, if, if we can hear you better, yeah. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. My name is Ali. I'm 10 years old. My special power is that I'm good at simplifying difficult discussions. I, I only want soccer. I only like the challenging parts of soccer. And basically, I just like anything that's a challenge to me. That's it. Nice. Okay. Um, let me see if there's anybody else. Um, Hisham, were you able to, to find your character? Hmm. Mm. You might have difficulties with um, his internet. Okay, then we uh, can go into the first question, which is... Just one note before we start uh, for the technical things. Uh, every time that someone wants to say something, you better introduce again, so we... We, we go directly know who you are, <laughs> just say your name. And um, we can use the feature raise hand to make it easier. You can find it um, where you can find it. <laughs> I don't know because I don't see Brooke, can you uh, help us? Uh, yes, uh, you click reaction and then raise hand. Perfect, so, and, and then, then we can give hand you. In your corner. And then you lower hand to the same place. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So the first question is actually a question that you can answer in the chat um, as well, which is how do you imagine the playground to be in three words? So it's feel, the smell, and the sound. Anybody has an answer? You can raise your hand. Um, or you can write it in the chat and then we will give you the word. Okay. Yeah, so you said, do you want to explain yourself? Uh, yes, I hope. I hope you can hear me. Yes. So Ella speaking. I think a playground should be big and open, um, with a lot of swings and a lot of games and ponds and grass for the children to play on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If that um got my message across. That is what I think. Yeah. 
And then the government official, what are your words on it? Very interesting. Yeah, hi, it's uh, Sally here, 50 years old, uh, work for the government. I think the playground should be busy with lots of people coming and using it. Should be clean and controlled and then not too noisy, in my opinion. That's good business. Fadila? <laughs> I think it should be happy and colourful and busy and it should smell clean and fresh. Um, yeah, and there should be lots of noise. All right. Um, and then I see one, one other one of Yusuf still that we didn't answer. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, it should feel very open. Um, and um, it's uh, humble, so it will be dusty and that's fine. Um, but it should be loud with lots of children. Nice. I think you all kind of got it a gist of how it feels to be thinking from the side of your character, which is great. Um, and they're all good answers. Uh, uh, can, we, can we, because I think we, uh, we need one character. So I can, uh, can I play a character? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm the, uh, from my experience, a character that is actually playing a big role and have a big say is a mother yes. um, of a toddler. It's number six. So she's a Janet, 29 uh, years old, mother of a toddler. Keeping safe is a priority for her. Overprotective. Loves playing with kids, but also to gather with fellow mothers. Take care of all children, not only hers. Finds plastic playgrounds nice and safe. Um, yeah, she's the one that she's not going to say um, yes to dirt and natural elements. That's why I think it's very important to have her in our. Welcome, Janet. So, so what are your three words? It's safety, safety, safety. <laughs> All about safety. Less cars around, uh, maybe a fence. Um, smelling fresh. Uh, yeah. All right. Safe. Um, another suggestion that uh, we had is if everybody that is joining the conversation can just unmute so that it feels more like we are a community and we don't have to wait for everybody if they're speaking to yeah. unmute. Their, um, their, uh, the real meeting won't be so quiet. <laughs> yes. We need to prepare ourselves. Let's, let's all speak on top of each other. <laughs> I just turned my camera off because it says my internet is unstable, uh, which is not ideal, but um, that's okay. I'm here. Right. Uh, so we have Islam. Islam? Okay, you want to, oh, oh, the microphone is broken. Okay, but then uh, I can read for the rest. Um, uh, Isam, who is um, a youth of 18 to 25, Julius. Um, his special powers is big influence on young generation. He wants to have... Uh, <coughs> A spot to gather with his friends during the evenings. He likes to participate on his own terms. Uh, he's looking for an opportunity to show his skills. And he's not allowed to say that I can help. So this is Isam when he's in this role. And his words for the first questions are cozy and friendly um, for the field. Uh, open air spaces for the smell and festival sounds, like celebration for the sounds. I'm taking notes as well. I think we have another one participant. Mm -hmm. Can you give a character to Medal Do I? 
Uh, I think I have. It's, um, let me check. It's number uh, seven, Melo, for you. Hi, hi to everybody. Hello, what is your character? My character? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I was not here from the beginning, so I, I, I'm trying ah. to, <laughs> to make, I couldn't hear you very well because I'm a job and I had my muted your... Uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 the PDF. Um, I also send you a send it to her, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. The, the page number, seven, character number seven. Just speaking in a stellar again. Mm -hmm. I think because after the suggestion of festivals, I think we can organize big festivals to come through our playground, um, uh, circus and parades that will just inspire our kids to want to get out and play more. Mm -hmm. From the government side, that sounds really well. And maybe we can actually put an entrance fee on that as well and make some good revenue. We have a question about that. So let's, uh, yeah, no. Melo, are you ready? Uh, Melo? Yes, I think I am. Okay, <laughs> can you introduce yourself to us? Hello, I am Melo. I'm really happy to join at this meeting because I've heard about it from Irini. So I'm an architect too. And I'm very happy for this to, to watch and listen to your ideas and your this amazing efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Have you been able to find your character? Wait, sorry. I'm trying, but I don't want to to interrupt and. <laughs> right. Then we can move to the next question while you're looking for your character, which is what function should the playground have? Um, and we've suggested a few ideas, but there might be more examples. Um, should it just. Okay. Sorry, I found it. I'm Grace. <laughs> yes. Hello, Grace. Okay. And, and what is your character? Are you a, a, a woman, I assume? Wait, 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 please. Sorry for the delay. It's, it's, I, I use my mobile now and it's not so easy. So would you like me to type it for you maybe in the chat? Would that be easier? Yeah, then we can all just read it. Okay. Maybe, uh, Melo, if I present your character, can you remember it? Yes, yes, I will try to remember. Yes, okay. of course. Thank you so much. Your Grace, 30 years old mother of six years old. Uh, yes. Special power. He loves to keep nature close to children. Uh, mm -hmm. Know about your character is loves playing with children and enjoying games with nature materials, natural materials. Likes to organize workshops and entertain for the community. Entertainment for the community. Sorry, uh, she's not allowed to say yes to plastic. Children just ha have to uh, just have to have fun. Huh. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, question about this, uh, uh, the previous question about now that you know your character, the question yes. was how you imagine the playground in three words. Mm -hmm. mm. Climbing. Surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, discover. Nice. 
Mm -hmm. So we can continue with the next question. And that was what functions should we see in the playground? So you see, um, Ms. Pranta have already introduced some ideas about what we can see inside as a, or what can be a one playground. It's more than a playground. We have already Yusuf having an opinion. He can already tell us. Yes, um, I think that the playground should have some play equipment, things like like swings and sliding boards, um, but also maybe some picnic tables or places for for resting uh, for the the mothers and the and fathers. Mm -hmm. I can see Padilla, six year old, has some input. Yes, I think the playground should be for playing and having fun and making friends. Do you need a specific thing for that or we'll just have... Uh, Franca, are you speaking? Or... Yes, I was. I was asking, do you need something specific for, for making friends? Oh, maybe um, like a seesaw or a game that requires, you know, more than one person or a roundabout. You know, those like circle things that you can spin around. Um, so, equipment that requires more than one person. Right. Um, and then I see that the government official just mentioned two things. Yeah. Hi there, everyone. I I think it's good to have some more stalls where you can have some uh, some people selling foods and stuff, and maybe a few carousels that people can can buy tickets for, and spaces that our companies can use. So multifunctional spaces, I think, it will be good. I also think, um, as a six-year-old, uh, maybe there should be two playground areas, one for the big kids and one for the little kids, so that the big kids don't come and like bully the little kids or push them off the playground. I think the playground should have an indoor, speaking as Ella, an indoor space and an outdoor space, and maybe a place that is a water feature place where the kids can play and interact with the water. I'm thinking maybe we can have a place where we can rent out for birthday parties, have the blow up castles and the bouncy castles. I think maybe we can have a place with where people can come and pet little animals as well, like a little animal interaction space for the children. Yeah. In those Sorry, and, and, I, and can I say something? And, and also, yes. it could be um, a, a change of big and small places. I mean, something that it, it's going to to change to to be a surprise every time. So, a smaller places to bring kids uh, closer, and, and so so uh, when I have my um, we have another kid in a, a very close, it's very close to me. I will speak, and I don't know him, I will speak uh, easier, perhaps. I think um, important for, for me is to be safe. So um, maybe to, to, uh, to, have, to have a spot where I can gather with another mothers and observe. So I have a good view of what is happening. Uh, whenever this is inside, outdoor, indoor. So this, uh, and also it would be nice to have the, the woman space when uh, with maybe with some kind of uh, small kitchen, or something that I can spend time there observing my children playing. And uh, I think we have the chat. Yes, and we also have Yusuf. 
sorry, uh, Isam, who is Julius, not Yusuf, I'm sorry. Uh, and then he says, uh, the function should be social gathering, physical activities, uh, physical activity spaces. Yes. Okay. And I think Ali also had some comments. Maybe you can uh, explain a bit further. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Oh, yes. I was saying that uh, they should have obstacle courses. For instance, areas that require you to expend a lot of energy, like maybe tree climbing or or hide and seek, like a jungle area, sort of. And then also reflection areas, maybe near a pond or a water source that require you to relax. Those want to expend less energy. And I also added something. Sorry, that's right. Oh, yeah. Demonstration spaces or multi-purpose spaces. So for instance, if today you want to set up a pavilion that requires people to maybe sit, you have that. Or the next day you want them to just stand and not sit and see what they can do if they are standing. Simple areas that can be turned into something else. That's it for me. Uh, also, I see Hisham has a very nice idea to have a theater involved, a small theater. Uh -huh. Julius, you lose me. <laughs> yes, I Okay. Someone that wants to raise the hand or actually talk, you don't need to raise hands, just talk. Yeah, the government official, mm -hmm. the government official agrees that theater could be nice. And then I heard some, uh, some mentioning of like multi-purpose spaces, maybe for the community. You can rent it out for weddings or Christmas parties or celebration of different uh, traditions. I think that uh, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. so we are speaking about a cultural space involved, like playground part of one cultural space. So that can bring uh, a question to the government. That can bring more uh, asset to the community than just a, a playground. Excellent. To conclude from all of your suggestions, you said um, it's not just a playground, but it can have more functions than one. Um, and that we just need to find a way how these different types of functions can work together or be combined. Um, but let's move into the next question before we go into that. Which is how should the playground be made? Um, are we upcycling material? Will it be made from local wood or just concrete and bricks? And with all of these suggestions, it's important to think about um, the cost, the, the type of labor that goes into it, and the durability of these, these different items. Um, some might uh, you know, but might be easy and doesn't involve much help of the community, but on the other hand, uh, the durability or the maintenance will not be for a longer period of time. Um, yeah, this is very, um, usually this question is a very, uh, I mean, uh, rich uh, response. There are a lot of responses to that question and a lot of opinions. Uh, it's very uh, um, important question because give exactly the idea where we stand uh, and if, if we can implement our vision in the way that can work for everybody. So, yeah. As I answer, as my character will be, I want a plastic import from China because it's coming with a certificate of safety it's durable, have a very nice soft grass, like plastic, plastic, that my children can fall down and not hurt. They also come home clean because it's so plastic. So this is very important that 
uh, yeah, what I'm saying that my character, I have met a lot of my character. <laughs> so, and I, I need, we need to give space and yeah, to this heart. Nice. Um, so Fatiga has to say something. Yes, I think it should be made out of colorful materials, uh, so lots of bright colors, and maybe it can also be like material that has lots of things to feel, so lots of different materials, um, so that there's different things to feel, and that you, like maybe one is um, you know shiny and another it has got like grips or doorknobs or something that you can play with and feel so the whole thing is a playground and i can see that uh, yusuf is agreeing with uh, janet wants to elaborate on that maybe yes i think it's uh it's good to have uh safe uh, materials that uh, I think will be will be uh, certified and that will be cheap um, and uh, since I'm playing this character uh, I, I'm too busy to really be working on it and I think um, you know it's it's nice to have um, local materials but I think um, the faster and easier we can have this uh, playground in place, the better for our neighborhood. Mm. Interesting. Um, Someone wants to oppose them. I can see a raised hand from Ella, the international volunteer. Um, so I think we can organize a workshop where we teach kids how to build and maybe we can get some prefabricated material and specialists from abroad to come and teach the children and then they can build their own spaces and color them in. We can employ advanced technologies and look for hubs within Zanzibar Dar es Salaam that can link up with hubs in other countries and form a sort of collaboration with the children, build their own spaces and the like. And I, I can see um, who is Melo again. Uh, Grace. Melo, if you can change your name as well to Grace, would be easier. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I can see some laughing comment from Ella. <laughs> I guess you don't like your character, Ella. <laughs> no, I like very sorry. much. <laughs> Grace, yes, go on. Hello. Yeah. Yes. I just want to say that it could be due to my character. It could be also a recycled, recycled um, products. That okay, perhaps yes. It could be nice to have the certified to be certified, but but to to start from from the from the thought of recycling. So it could be a combination of uh, local products uh, and recycled at the same time. Oh, and I can see the government official has some thoughts. Yeah, uh, I don't care so much if it's plastic or concrete recycled, as long as it's easy to maintain and doesn't require too much uh, faff afterwards. And I think we should employ local guys to support uh, the businesses uh, in Zanzibar. I don't think we should uh, go and employ a mainland architect. No need to do that. But keep it local and practical. That's my view. But local, Mr. Local Government Official, don't you think that is going to be limiting the scope of how, you, how far you can dream and think? And we want to make the children dream and think big. Shouldn't we like show them that the world is, is, a, is a big place and they can be anyone in communicate and meet with anyone they want. Don't you think that's what we should aim for, Mr. Government Official? I don't mind dreaming big, dear uh, Ella volunteer. 
uh, I suggest that you come with some international funding so that we can pay for it. And then I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, to dream big with nice materials. Would you be able to help with that? I'm, I'm so willing to help. I can organize meetings. I'm, I have connections. I have, um, we can use different uh, technology with Zoom. I can set it all up and I can definitely connect you with people from um, where I'm from and we can look for funders and just take this project to the next level. Yeah, if it's quick and easy, um, I'm open for that. Thank you. And what budget usually the, the government could give for making these workshops? And <laughs> Do you mean my budget? Yes, I mean, in general, because we're speaking about workshop, how, um, how you imagine it, because it's part of this, uh, could be part of the building and the, the background, but I'm also asking the volunteers and the rest, uh, how we can imagine one workshop can work. I mean, um, did, do you think that we will need extra resources to do it? Um, or we can keep it uh, more um, volunteer uh, uh, participants and not so much of um, using the budget of the government or the other NGOs. I think. So generally, uh, my question is how we imagine it building a playground through workshops. I think it's good to reach out for as much funding as possible through different channels um, rather than doing it voluntarily. <laughs> Any other views from anyone else? I think we have like opportunities like GoFundMe and um, with technology today, there are so many organization and fab labs that are willing to donate our equipment and, and knowledge and specialists to um, aid in projects such as ours. And I think because we're dealing with children, we're at a special place where we can um, reach out to other people and organizations and funds that would not be accessible to us if we were building, say, other projects. But I think when it comes to children and spaces uh, concerning children, we can always find a, a way to um, get what we need to make it happen. It might take a long time and a lot of money to get all of these people from abroad to Namo to, to just build this small playground. Are you asking if it might take a lot of time and money? Yeah, I'm asking. Oh, yes, but from my experience from the organizations I've worked with before I came here to Zanzibar, I've worked through another organization where we built a playground in Dodoma, and we also have built a playground in Mwanza. So from my network, I'm sure these people would be more than happy to uh, come and help us build another playground here in Zanzibar. We have a star volunteer here. I'm only six, so I can't really help build a playground, I, but I can draw pictures of the playground. As help with the design. Yes, this is actually very important. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, how, how the children are involved in the, this is another big session would be, of the children, and actually you host one of them, that can be involved in the design of the playground. It's very important because the children know what they want. They can express themselves. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to, literally to give them space to express themselves and to follow to follow them. So I think the children will be play a big role, like especially the six years old. Yeah, so we could paint a wall maybe in school, like as a school project, my class, we could all come and decorate like a wall or something like a mural or um, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, the, the, the very, very nice technique with the six years old, it's to, to give them the task to, to draw their uh, dream playground. So, and you can be surprised that you see actually elements that you can provide them to make their dream playground. It's not something crazy. So. Uh, yeah, well, my five-year-old nephew, his dream playground has a monkey bar. That's all he needs. 
is it must have monkey bars. It's a, a dog. <laughs> but the dog is less plausible. But that's just what he told me when I asked him what he would like in his playground. He said monkey bars and two dogs. Okay. <laughs> I know. So we also have some uh, interesting input from Julius. He cannot speak, so I'm going to. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so uh, Julius, 19-year-old youth, says that it must be a mix between the two approaches. Um, how to manage a local funds to build the playground by the local community users. Anybody who would have an, an idea of this? How this can be done? Um, how, how, how will everybody participate if uh, somebody else is teaching them the exact way to do it? And uh... Yeah, I think the participation can be in many phases, many ways. Like, uh, everybody, everybody can participate. Let's say the ones that uh, want actually to build, they can learn, they can make workshops then through the workshop they can learn, but also the, the, the mothers can participate. They can take care of the uh, logistics around the workshops. So it's important like everybody participates in one another way. Uh, when I'm speaking about logistics, like um, uh, it's a big role that uh, they can cook or make a one um, side workshop where they're cooking for the participant of the building team. So there's a one, one big, team um, uh, enriching the day of the workshop. During my workshop in Mwanza, as we were working on building that playground, we developed a method called co-production of space where we had different people playing different roles and each role was relevant and important in that area. But we also developed a system where we introduced what it was we wanted to teach them and how we wanted to build that playground. And we made an offer to whoever would want to learn this method. And what happened was now all the, the repairs and maintenance are no longer done by the organization I worked for, but it's the people that we trained and other people came and trained us and the knowledge that we learned from them, we have used, we use in our playground in Dodoma. So I'm thinking we can apply the same, um, practice here in Zanzibar and we can create something beautiful. Yeah, because actually you create the most important for one garden, like playground. It's the, the, the feeling of ownership. If you make it by yourself, you feel that you're responsible. So exactly. you take, it's take care of by itself. Which brings us to the next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I thought the next question was uh, okay. You've already. <laughs> sorry. I thought the previous slide was the next question. Because not, no, not everybody had the round of um, if we're hiring or doing it ourselves, right? Yeah, or from, from the point of view of the young, uh, younger children, such as Ellie. Um, how do you think you can help out? I think Ali has left or left or unmuted. But if nobody else has something to contribute on this, we can move forward. I from the government side, it would be easy to just hire a fundi. But if someone is willing to be uh, managing the project and involve kids, women, mothers, uh, that's not a problem. But I don't have the time to deal with it. Maybe Ella can take on that as well. She seems key. We have an interesting question. I can just chip it in now and we can think about it and discuss about it uh, from one of our audience. He's asking uh, how uh, relevant culture activities can be incorporated in, in the playground. 
for kids and for adults that bring them and wait for them. Can, can you say that again? So the question is how relevant cultural activities can be incorporated in the playground for both kids and for the adult, adults that bring them. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe uh, Yusuf could answer this question. No. <laughs> Or somebody who would like to answer it? I guess it depends on what the cultural activities are. Like, would it be, are we talking like religious celebrations or um, I'm not, yeah that would influence like how you incorporate it. If you mm -hmm. would think about it from the perspective of your character, what would you think is a cultural activity? Or like what this this word indeed is already something that that doesn't necessarily speak for for children because they don't understand like, what is cultural or like, what is cultural activity. So if you would think about it from a different way, um, yeah, how would you look at it? Maybe they can have like special events at the park or at the playground, um, like have events on special days or, um, you know, if it's like Eid or Christmas, um, whatever it may be, then they have like an event so that we can go meet our friends and celebrate together. Um, and then also maybe having things in different languages. So if I speak one language at home and maybe another at school to have signs that are in both those languages so that that can feel celebrated as well. Interesting. In, in the playground we built in the Doma, uh, one thing we, we did find was interesting when we we're discussing options for the equipment and most of the animals that, um, most of the equipment was shaped like uh, animals and some of the animals were not relevant. We found like dragons and and um, eagles and so we discussed with one of the um, mothers and she was working for a um, a creative startup that a uh, women organization had formed and so she was able to um, link us with an artist who was able to customize them the the customize the the, the swing the equipment we bought so that it was more familiar to like things and stories or um, places that the children who are gonna play were already familiar with. And again, we did these just by having a series of workshops where we had children and their parents, and then the parents gave their view and the kids did some doodles and they drew their own thing. And we had a, another artist who was able to then superimpose what the kids created onto the equipment. And it was just a beautiful experience. So relate everything that has to do with the playground, with the context and the culture. Yeah, but it mostly came from the children because personally coming in as volunteers, we had no idea. We just came in with our own um, mm -hmm. concept of, of, of what we thought that children needed, but it was during the, the processes, the pre-design and build process that we discovered all these things. I hope the government official would think this is relevant for Zanzibar. I'm not really sure how it works here. Uh, yeah, it could be relevant for Zanzibar. I think we could look at different aspects where we can maybe uh, do a food festival and have people coming to buy 
different dishes or a music festival. We can have uh, local bands coming and then we can sell some tickets for that. So yeah, that could be a, that could be an idea, especially supporting the, the businesses working with culture. And I don't know if it's possible in Zanzibar, but in the Doma, the local government official was able to connect us with a group of schools and have the children get like off days where they can just come in, completely immerse themselves in our workshops without having to worry about taking time off from school and coordinating with parents. I don't know how easy it would be to do in this area if, you, if you're able to connect us with someone who can do it or if you're able to help us with that. Yeah, I can, I can put you in touch with my uh, the school minister of Zanzibar. <laughs> you can, that could absolutely uh, happen. As a, as a small child, I support the idea of having a day off school. Yes, please. Sounds great. <laughs> Okay. Um, and then the important following question is how do we keep this playground a safe space? Um, and for this, you can think about limited access or if it can be used during the night or not, or if there is a gate um, or what other methods or things we can use to ensure the safety of the playground. I think the best way to keep it safe would be to have a gate and a fence and then an entrance fee. For people that come and pay for it, they will not disrupt. Yep. <clears throat> okay, my character loves every point of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so what time, what would be the opening hours? What would be? The opening hours. <clears throat> uh, so and then I, we have also a follow-up question, sorry to interrupt, um, from the person talking about culture before, Arnold Mc, Mc, hmm, McConney, I don't know how this is pronounced, and he said, uh, if the playground could be used during the night, I think it's related. That's why I'm saying it. You could also join the conversation, yeah. <laughs> Arnold. I, I, my heart will say why it's a playground for children and uh, it would be dangerous to be open at night for, yeah, to gather teenagers and be noisy and everything. Because you, I, I suppose you cannot put a fee or have a guard also doing that, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And um, because I haven't played so far, my character, who is me, <laughs> and the team that wants to do this project, uh, wants to ask the government official um, regarding gate and fee entrance, isn't that limiting the access and um, making exclusions of community members that are not able to pay an entrance fee. It, it will be a place that is used by uh, that also uh, the campaign. I think from our perspective, this is a very, very valuable piece of land and Ngambo is going to be the center of, of the city. So uh, we really need to benefit from that. Uh, and then we can fund other projects and keep the city safe. So I think that's a, a very important perspective. Uh, you must not forget that. And there are many other places uh, that uh, everyone can go. So I think this should be something exclusive. Interesting. <laughs> Very realistic as well. <laughs> well. For me, I don't really understand the safety concept because where we come from, people just don't vandalize playgrounds. So I did, we, it was really difficult for me to come here and see that you have to protect something that is already public and like we want it to be open to the kids but at, at the same time not look like it you have to pay because some families can't afford to like in the domain ones that the idea of paying to go and play when you can just play on the side of the road was you know was one of the things that came across during our workshops but i just don't understand the concept of having to protect a space that is supposed to be public yeah. Or how, in the first place. how you 
combine the two to be paid play paid playground, but at the same time participatory by all the locals. I mean, yeah, it was difficult for me to grasp this concept when we we're doing the other playgrounds because where we come from, we don't have to worry about anything. You just we just playgrounds just exist. You walk to, to a park and it's just transitions into it. There is no borders or boundaries like that. So I don't understand. Um, it's difficult for me to to think of it that way. But I'm 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 also a volunteer who's here to learn. So I'll appreciate any um, information I can get. I think Julius might have an answer to this. Added in the chat that it must be in a safe location far from the main roads and street, maybe in the center of the neighborhood, um, which can already be a way of not, perhaps not putting a gate around it. If it's in a location that's not, um, that's not being accessed by, by strangers so much. I think it should be close to the school as well, because then I can just walk from school to the playground um, or close to the house, my house, um, so that my my mom can see me from my house while I'm in the playground. Um, that would make it safe for me, and it must be easy to walk. There should be a pathway from school to the playground that I can walk along that is safe. Um, yeah, so that it's easy to walk there and get there. And um, there can't be a fee because I, I don't have a job. I have no money. And I, my mom says I can't get pocket money yet, so. No, I, I must have, mom, I, I don't want entrance fee. I'm going to boycott. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe it can be open during the day and then we can have it as a venue during other hours. So we can- Oh, uh, a compromise already. Oh, uh, at least uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. be sure that <laughs> it's not completely <laughs> open and free. And maybe the government find the money from, from the kiosk or the Sunday, Saturday market, local place for the market. Different ways of doing it. Also, why not the materials we are using to not, to not be is breakable? I mean, to be made with, the, for example, we can um, do with the bricks or with the concrete or there are so many examples of friendly play playgrounds that are made with uh, such materials, but also it's easy to participate, to learn techniques, but also stay. I mean, are, easy, are not easy to destroy. I think we need to find ways to, to avoid fee and gates, if you ask me. But uh, Yeah, it's important that we don't have to spend a lot of money maintaining it, yes. because we, we don't have that. Yes. Question: How and who will maintain the playground? Very well. Will this be done by the community themselves? Uh, will it be just by the government or through the school? These are just a few examples of what can be done and can also be a mix. But <laughs> Love to hear your suggestions. Before we move into that, sorry, it's just a new comment from Julius who cannot speak on the microphone. Uh, and he says that it could also be a transparent fence. It's very interesting to think about this. Thank you, Julius. It's actually very interesting. Yeah, from recycling bottles. Plus, yes. Bottles. Okay, we can move forward. Sorry, I just had to say this. So how we all, all, I think we already answered this question, more or less. Uh, if the, the beauty of the participatory design and building of a garden is that you build this um, feeling of uh, belonging and ownership and things. So the people doing it, they want actually to protect it afterwards. So they, they, it's the playground is maintained by itself. Of course, it would be nice to have like a neighbor, uh, like a neighborhood monthly cleanup or some gatherings in combination with some festival or some 
workshop, like that. So I think the, the government is very beneficial on that point. It does not need to give so much money as can be for one very good designed playground cleaned by, by, uh, by the government by itself. So if you are sitting there with your children, you will, will clean up the mess that your, your children are making. <laughs> I, I need to, no? I need to give an example. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, this would be part of the neighborhood gathering together, clean up. Okay. Referring once again to our projects in Zanzibar, in Mwanza and Dodoma, we integrated the Saturday cleaning up system that the government already had into this and the playgrounds we built, but we also um, placed uh, some policies with with, with the help of the government official, we were able to introduce policies that uh, govern cleanliness and, you know, uh, little fines for people who are found to litter and, and not clean up after themselves. And the government uh, was able to integrate the local authorities that the local security that already exists in the area into also adding this new playground as part of their patrol. And so the fine was integrated in a way that it pays these people as well, so that it was an incentive for them to be on the lookout for people. But at the same time, the people are now more aware of being careful with how they uh, treat their environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. That could be That's an option. actually good option. Um, I think this was kind of the, the end of, of the community meeting.